Here's my super cool orange sewing machine again. Just painted this thing up, get out of the way a little bit. There's a whole video online uh, that you can check out in the way that you can see me paint this thing, although please don't try it at home. It was a bit of a nightmare, but still a ton of fun. So I'm gonna get my big head out of the way here in a moment, zoom the camera down so you can see what's really happening, and I'm gonna talk you through this step by step. Ready? Let's do it. So we're now approaching the sewing machine, and the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the needle down function on the machine. Needle down means that when I stop, this needle down is gonna be right where it belongs for my pivot. This is also the point in life where you wish you had three or four hands. That doesn't mean my small children in here helping me, it just means enough hands to do it. Some people will use straight pins for this. If you're really struggling, because I have plenty of extra border, my trick is just to run it long. So I've got all my border fabric running a little long off of there. I can actually see the quilt, the flange, and the border, and I'm ready to sew. Little gas. Get my hand out of the way so you can see what's going on here. A little gas pedal, and away we go. So nice and slow. There's no reason to be in a rush for this. I'm going to sew from one end to the next, and then I am going to take this over, press the border open, and cut the seam allowance, meaning I'm going to cut the borders to fit the right side. I'm going to do this to both the uh, parallels for this particular quilt, it'll be the bottom and the top, and then I'm going to show you exactly how to insert the next series of flanges. Okay, the first two borders are in place, so that means both sides on this particular quilt, top and bottom, are in place. Time to iron them open, so I'm going to give that a whirl real quick and check that out. One of the things I'm going to do is simply slide Sherman, the tank iron, up inside and hit the tip of that interior flange and the edge of the exterior black border at the same time pressing them down nice and clean. Now look at how good that looks. Three dimensional, oh where's my hand? There it is. Three dimensional border. So the real trick to this is setting in the next two sides. Okay I'm gonna get ready to show you how to cut the borders off of the quilt. Make them fit the right size. But you do deserve at least some sort of a disclaimer. To credit all of the wonderful professional quilters that are out there that do measure the centers of the quilt and do measure the edges and the sides of the quilt for their math and cut their borders and fit their borders into position on their quilt. That is definitely a workable technique. I'm not trying to take any of that away from anybody. I'm doing very small quilts, roughly, let's say 30 by 44, as well as they're mostly fused. So I'm not getting a stretching factor at all in there. So you just need to be aware, my technique works this way on small quilts, especially fused quilts where the background is not stretching. Other than that, you probably still want to measure multiple locations on your quilt, cut your borders to fit, and allow yourself to pin them into location so they fit correctly. Make sense? Okay. Now that that's over with, let me show you how the down and dirty way is of doing it. I believe a gentleman out there calls it the caveman style. This is the way it's done. Borders have been sewn into place. Borders have been pressed open. I am taking as much of my ruler as I can possibly afford, running the whole length of the quilt. That way I am continuing that straight edge right through my border. It's sewn on long, and now it fits perfect. What do you think about that? If you don't believe me that it fits perfect, just ask me. I'll show you and tell you it does. Ha <laughs> ha, because you're not close enough to see it. Fits perfect, just like that. You ready? I'm gonna do it again. This time, upside down, kids. Look, no hands. Well, that's not safe. And I'm not closing my eyes either or tying an arm behind my back. But, again, lots of fusible, very small quilts. That works in a nice, slow, well-done seam allowance. That makes the big difference. So, borders are cut. I am ready to go back to the sewing machine. This is where it gets a little tricky. You're going to want to watch close as I insert the second round of borders and flanges.